The Bible says, And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? When he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. It's been said that we stand on the backs of great men, that Christians today enjoy the blessings of those Christians that went before us. And that is true. No man liveth unto himself, and no man dieth unto himself. It's okay to stand on the backs of great men, but you cannot stay on the backs of great men. You need to have your own walk with God. You need to see his power in your life for himself. And here Elisha, the protege and servant of Elijah, longed to see the God of his predecessor. He had seen God work in Elijah's life. He wanted to see God work in his life. And he exclaimed, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? We could look back in church history at great men like Hudson Taylor, Taylor, William Carey, George Mueller. But where is the God of those great men? Where is the God of Peter, James, and John? Where is the God of Paul? Where is the God of Mel Sabaka? He's alive and well. He's here today. David wanted to see God's power as he had seen it in the sanctuary. Do you want to see the Lord of the book you read and love in your life? Where is that God that can part the Red Sea, raise the dead, and open the eyes of the blind? What must you do to see his power in your life? You have to do what Elisha did. You need to take the mantle. You need to take what those great men of God have left behind. Don't let it fall to the ground. Don't leave it there to admire. Pick it up for yourself and smite the waters. Do something with what you've inherited from those great men. See it work for yourself. Apply it to your life. Give it out to bless someone else. And you will see the Lord God of Elijah and the God of this book prove himself strong in your life today.